the thesis uh, today is that uh, as a result of a number of institutional developments, many of them having not much to do with one another, um, the uh, uh, presidency is a far more dangerous uh, office today than it was uh, during Richard Nixon's time. Uh, um, that, uh, and that one shouldn't be fooled by uh, a, a relatively a moderate, uh, rationalistic, uh, Ivy League uh, president at the present time. But the uh, uh, American presidency has become uh, an institutional platform for charismatic extremism, uh, uh, bureaucratic lawlessness, and um, military lawlessness. So there has been this change since, notice, in these years, 1972 is the primary system, this uh, uh, development of the legal office. Uh, really, in the last 40 years, um, uh, this propaganda machine, uh, 40 years, uh, uh, government by poll and legitimating the public in the last 40 years, maybe even less, 30 years. Um, these things really, I mean, because I, the, the aim of this book is to say, you know, it isn't true that we've saw, you know, there's an American constitutional tradition of 210 years. We've had our difficulties, to be sure, but compared to Europe, we've managed to keep things under control. So there's no problem. That's the basic, and what I'm trying to say is, really, for the last 40 years, there's quite a few things that are happening, oftentimes not in any deep relationship to one another, but they're happening, and they're interacting in possibly synergistic of a bad variety of fashion. So let's begin with how presidents have, uh, the different modality uh, through which presidents uh, are selected. Uh, the key date here is uh, 1972. Uh, between 1832 and uh, 1972, uh, more or less, uh, the uh, regional party bosses um, uh, selected the president of the United States, a candidate for the Democrats and the Republicans. And they were mostly concerned with one question. Who will, uh, which candidate will maximize my chance of winning my governorship? Um, uh, because these were regional party people. Um, uh, in 1972, uh, uh, there was this decisive change um, uh, to a primary system. So let's just think of a two-party system and use the median voter rule. So that is a fundamental constitutional change in the modern republic, which creates incentives for extremism. Um, the uh, second important point is that the disintegration of the party establishment leads to entrepreneurial, charismatic candidates. Um, uh, each candidate, uh, the first thing he does is hire a public opinion specialist. Uh, and the science of public opinion has, of course, improved. And they're packaging sound bites and smiles and things of this kind. Uh, uh, and so we have a politics of unreason. And then we have the president getting into the White House. And um, we have the next basic institutional change, which is something called the White House staff. This is modern. In 1939, which is after all the first 150 years of the American Republic, the number of professional staffers in the White House was zero. At the present time, the White House staff is 2,000. <laughs> um, that's a misleading number. I would say there are 700 super able, super politicized, super loyal uh, people, many of them trained at the Air Law School, um, and then 1,300 more technocratic types. Fourth, we have a new form of plebiscitarian legitimation. 
public opinion poll. I ask this question uh, because I don't, I, you know, there are many questions that I ask I don't know the answers to, but this is one I would love to have an answer to. When did people start believing in polls? See, before 1930s, there were no polls. We, people were elected for X years. The opposition says, oh, you're, the people are no longer with you. That's what the opposition is paid, paid to do, you know. And, um, the, uh, and the, we'll find out the next election. This model is being displaced in the public mind with um, plebiscitary groups of private, uh, the privatization of elections called polls. Then we have another transformation, institutional transformation which is um, the mode in which the executive branch interprets the law. Uh, it's fair to say that the White House now has a legal capacity to write opinions as to what the law requires. Uh, and also, the Office of Legal Counsel has now been revolutionized. All of the top people are political ones. They shift with every administration. We have an extreme president, charismatic media manipulation, massive central politicized control of bureaucracy, and a legal rubber stamp. 